Some of these names, some of these potential general manager candidates, some of them who've actually interviewed, they make sense. But there's one, especially one in there that just feels like it poisons the whole lot. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. What? What? In the name of Taylor Hall for Adam Larson. Was Peter Shirelli's name doing on that list? How does that happen? How does anyone with even a sideways cursory knowledge of hockey or even someone who's hired someone else to have that knowledge say, yeah, you ought to bring in this Shirelli guy. He's really sharp. Not overstating it here. When I say that Shirelli might have had the most bumbling, error-filled, accountability-lacking tenure of any general manager in this century in the National Hockey League. He showed up in Edmonton, gifted from the hockey gods, Connor McDavid, and he still managed to turn that into Nothing. He had no earthly idea how to team build. He had no concept whatsoever of what was needed for that player in that setting, how to build around him, how to build behind him, and oh my goodness, how to find him a goaltender. A problem which, by the way, persists to this day, I should add. When Shirelli was finally canned, the The celebrations in northern Alberta were through the roof. It was like they'd won yet another cup. Because now with Shirelli gone, well, they could finally go about the business of just, you know, finding a few pluggers. And, well, it's obviously not been that simple. It never is that simple. But it's also nowhere near as hard as Shirelli made it look. His name shouldn't come up in any GM searches of any team ever anywhere. So why did it with, oh, right, Boston. Of course, Peter Shirelli was the GM of the Bruins before taking that job in Edmonton. Actually won with the Bruins. Different era, different time. Very, very little emphasis, and and for some teams, none on any advanced analytics. Everything was done by the seat of everyone's pants. Uh, You'd look out on the rink and say, yeah, we could use this and that, and we could use this. Let's just go and execute that. And Shirelli acknowledged after being fired in Edmonton in an exclusive, extraordinary interview with the Ottawa Sun about his time with the Oilers, that he had regrets about the trade that I mentioned earlier. It might be the worst trade that's ever been made. Sending Hall to the Devils for Larson, a run-of-the-mill defenseman for a guy who ended up winning the, the Hart Trophy in Newark. <laughs> Look, I, I'm not suggesting that the Penguins haven't had their share of stinkers. I mean, they also just let... Jared McCann walk away so that they could protect Jeff Carter. But even in reading this interview, which I did, by the way, in its entirety last night, don't ask, I just did. He wouldn't acknowledge any mistakes as being, how do I put this? Mistakes that shouldn't have been made. Mistakes that could have been avoided with process. Now, I didn't exactly do some deep dive investigation to find this interview. It was one Google away. I knew that Bruce Garriock, a friend of mine at the Ottawa Sun, had conducted it. I searched. I found it on Google. In two seconds, anybody could. So even if you'd already given him the benefit of the doubt in any capacity, Shirelli, 
You, you wouldn't after reading this. This guy has no idea what he did wrong, why he did it wrong, or why he'd be a catastrophe if he was anybody else's GM ever again. But he, he was in Boston once. And I know there, there's some of you who hear me talk about this Fenway Sports Group Boston connection as if I'm some sort of myopic Pittsburgher, and I am. Okay, I, I'm just putting that right up on top of the table here. I am, and I can't stand the idea of a Pittsburgh team being owned by out-of-towners who don't even live here, who don't come here, who don't have a care in the world for this franchise. But I'm sure that what happened here was that they got themselves a pack of resumes and they saw this one was from a guy who actually had some GM experience and then they saw the word Boston. Hey, this one looks good. What do you think of this one here? And no one else in the room knows anything about hockey. Maybe there's like one underling somewhere sitting at a table in the far corner who goes, oh, what's his name? Peter Shirelli. And that underling just kind of shows himself out the door. <laughs> you know, I mean, how? What kind of a process is this? Is it fair to ask? Look, they can get it right. All they need to do, all they need to achieve out of this process is to get it right. If they get the right individual or individuals, depending on the structure they choose, then none of this, what I'm talking about, and Shirelli showing up for an interview will even matter. But as of this split second, it absolutely does. It's a terrible reflection on the process that he was ever brought in. When we come back, J1Q. comes from David who says, DK, I completely agree with your stance that Jason Bottrell is the right person for this job. Actually, he or Billy Guerin should have been the GM right after Jim Rutherford, whose decision to make himself GM for life here actually tarnished his brilliant accomplishments in bringing back-to-back -back cups. Uh, let me start with the back part first, David. No, they did not tarnish anything. Jim was hired, if you'll recall, by David Morehouse to shepherd these three. You only mentioned two of them, but you might have left out the best of them in Tom Fitzgerald, whose team actually is still playing right now, New Jersey Devils. He was supposed to be their mentor, their guide, and there was almost supposed to be some kind of in-house competition or however it was that was cast. It was really, really unusual. But all that Jim was going to do was become the guy. Something similar had begun in Vancouver, by the way, where he is still until you saw that the Canucks weren't going to be very good for a very long time. So it was like, well, here's Patrick Alvine. Here's our GM. Go ask him questions. But in Pittsburgh, it was going to be Jim. He wanted another cup. And then when he got one cup, he, he wanted another one after that. And he got it. He got it. That's not tarnishable unless he does, you know, something wrong in life. And he most definitely didn't do that. That's not something where you say, yeah, but what came after those two cups was a stain. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. They just became yet another team that doesn't win three cups in a row or four cups in a row. Okay, so let's let's leave. Jim out of this from that regard. I have no problem with Jim having taken the reins because Jim knew what to do with those reins and Jim added a couple of rings. And then, by the way, got inducted into the Hall of Fame. And still, and still, all three of these guys, it should be noted, became GMs. All of them. You know, Fitzy, yeah, I've already mentioned, he's, he's in Newark. Bottrell became the GM in Buffalo, went out to Seattle after that didn't work out to work under Ronnie Francis, and Billy G is right there in St. Paul doing the job himself. So 
he didn't exactly stunt their growth. He just kept any of them from having a job here in Pittsburgh. That didn't force anyone in the Penguins management team to go find Ron Hextall. Okay, so let's let's keep the, the blame where it goes and compartmentalize it properly. I'm on Team Bottrell. I've been on Team Bottrell for a month. I've put it in print. I've put it on this program. I've stated it repeatedly. I've shared my reasoning for it. I believe that he is just that right mix, just that Goldilocks mix of a younger guy who's going to be more open to ideas, more open to new data, to new information, to how that information gets applied as well as how it's accrued. And he's had his fingers in every pie on the way up the ladder, beginning, most notably, with development. And if this team's ever going to become what everyone would hope it will become again someday, and I'm talking in the post-Sid Geno Tanger era, you're going to want someone like that at the helm. You're going to want them building a real system, even as they go about trying to do right by Sid, Gino, and Tanger on their way out. He's a pro. He's engaging. He's got a personality to him. At the same time, he's not over the top. You're not going to see him make a complete fool of himself the way Kyle Dubas did during the Maple Leafs playoff. I was about to call it a run. The Maple Leafs playoff cameo just now. He's pitch perfect for this. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. 